In this video, we'll make a mini map using render textures. Let's get right into it. So as you can see, I have this very simple scene with a player that we can move around. But of course, it's very much in need of a mini map. But in order to create a mini map, we need a second camera that can render our scene from a top down view. To do that, let's deselect everything, right click in our hierarchy and select camera. Let's then reset the transform on our camera and make sure that this sits at the same position as our player. To do that, we can select our player, right click on his transform, hit copy component. We can then select our camera, right click and hit paste component values. But we want to move our camera up. So let's drag up on our Y to something like 20. Let's also flip the camera so it's facing downwards. We do this by rotating by 90 degrees on the X. And first off, we want to make sure that we have all the same settings as our previous camera. Because in most cases, you probably want to render the seam in pretty much the same way. To do that, let's select our previous camera, hit right click, copy component, let's select our new camera and paste those back in. In my case, this just changed the background to a solid color. Then we can change the projection from perspective to orthographic. This pretty much just removes all perspective from our scene. This is something that almost all minimaps do. It's great because it gives the impression that the scene is laid out flat. We then use the size to zoom out on our minimap and you can choose the size of your zoom here. You can have it show the entire level at once or have it only show a small part of your level but then follow around the player. I'm just gonna set mine to 15. We can also delete our audio listener, our GUI layer and our flare layer. We only want to be using the camera. But currently our minimap is overlaid on top of the entire screen. And that's not really the effect we're going for. We want our minimap to be shown as part of our UI. So let's now rename this object, call it minimap camera. Let's go into the scene view and let's create another object. This time we are going to go under UI and we are going to select raw image. We can then switch into 2D mode and hit F to focus on our raw image. Now a raw image is basically like any other UI image component except it takes in a texture instead of a sprite. This is good because we are basically going to tell our minimap camera to take everything it renders and put it into a texture. This is called a render texture. We can then take that texture and display it on our raw image. Let's select our 2D controls up here. Let's zoom out a bit. And now we can position our minimap where we want it. I'm gonna anchor mine to the top right here. I'm gonna set the offset on the X to negative 75 and the same thing on the Y. I'm gonna set the width and height to something like 170 by 170. And I'm then gonna offset it on the X and Y by about 110. So now in our game view, we should see a white square in the top right corner of where our minimap is going to be. But of course we still need to display our texture. To do that, we create a new render texture. Let's go to the project, right click, go create, and now select render texture. And let's call this our minimap render texture. Here we have a bunch of texture settings. We're gonna leave pretty much all of them as is. I'll have a link to where you can read about these in the description. First off, we can set the size to the same as our raw image. Let's set it to 170 by 170. And we can also disable our depth buffer. If we now select our minimap camera, we can see here that there is a target texture variable. And this takes in a render texture. Let's simply drag our minimap render texture into this slot. And you can see now that our game view switches back to our main camera. So our minimap camera is no longer rendering on screen. Instead, all of its data is being fed into this minimap render texture. And if we click on it, we can actually see the preview here. So now all we need to do is select our raw image and drag in our minimap render texture as the texture input. And voila, our camera is now rendering directly onto the screen as a UI element. Now we can rename this to our minimap. And if we now hit play and start moving around the scene, you can see our player moving around. Of course, our minimap isn't following our player yet, but we can add this very easily. Also remember that you can style this minimap in any way you'd like. It works just like any other UI element. You can add a mask in case you want, say, a circular minimap. You can easily add a border. I'm just going to right click, go UI and add another image. I'm going to scale this up to be about 178 by 178. I'm then going to place this behind the minimap. I'm going to call this the minimap border. We then parent the minimap to the minimap border. Make sure to anchor the minimap border to the upper right. And let's have our minimap snap to the center of our minimap border. So now we've created a border for our minimap. Let's now have it follow our player. Of course, the easiest way is to go ahead and just parent this to the player. And as you can see, this works just fine as long as our player is only rotating on the Y axis. But this is not always the case. So a better, more stable way is by creating a small script. 
Let's call this our minimap script. Let's hit create an ad and open it up in Visual Studio. Now, first off, we want a reference to our player. We'll create a public transform player. And then instead of the two default methods, we'll create a void. And now this is going to be a late update method. We want to do this in late update because it's called after update and fixed update. And so we'll only update the position of our minimap after our player has moved. In here, we can create a new vector three. This is going to be the new position of our minimap. And we can set this equal to our player's position. Of course, we still want to be zoomed out on the Y. So we can set new position dot Y to our current Y position. We can then say transform dot position equals new position. If we save this, go into Unity, make sure to reference our player and hit play. We can now see the minimap actually follows around the player. It doesn't rotate with the player, but that's a very common thing for many minimaps. If you wanted to also rotate with the player, we simply go into our code, add a few lines, and we can now set transform.rotation equal to quaternion.euler, and here we feed it 90 degrees on the X, our player's rotation on the Y, and here we want to make sure to use Euler angles dot Y, and then zero on the Z. Let's save this, go into Unity, hit play, and voila! Our camera is now also rotating with the player. So there's of course a lot of fun stuff that you can do with your minimap from here on out. You can add icons, you can add the ability to zoom in and out by simply adjusting the projection size of your camera, and you can add lots of styling options and masks. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in August and a special thanks to Hans Haftun, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Jesper Mikkelsen, James P, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latito, Aaron, Robert Bund, Husam Kazar and Judaman. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot guys.